Okay, we're going to go into the second part of this interview with Dr. Dane Dongreen Akuane. He's an MP in the Sudan National Assembly for the SPLM, Sudan People's Liberation Movement. He's also the co-chair of the African and Diaspora Institute, the Steering Committee. We're going to be looking at the situation in Sudan. He's an MP there, so he's he giving me an insight into some of the issues in politics and economics that's going on there. This is the second part of the interview with Dr. Deng Dongreen Akuane. Right, you're in Sudan, so I have to touch on like the specifics in the country. There was recently some fighting in South Sudan. I think it was about a month ago. Yeah, yes. what happened is we just came from uh, war, which has gone on for 40 years or so. The first one was 1955 to 1972. That was the first war. The second war, 1983, until we signed the agreement in uh, 2005. And this 2005 brought a succession of hostilities. But then we developed the culture of war. There are militias, you know, private owned army. And the agreement has provided that all these army, private armies, should be dissolved and incorporated into the state based army. And this group, some of them are resisting, being integrated, being dissolved, being removed from the illegal existence. Then what happened in the last month? That militias were asked to, to join either the SPLA, which is now the Army of the South, or join the Sudan Army, which is the Army of the whole Sudan. And they failed to join. And when they were asked to join, they reacted by shooting. And the SPLA was strong enough to crunch that group and they have been subdued and the uh, new process of law is taking place. Those who have committed crimes will, will be punished according to law. Those who have not committed crimes will be set free and integrated into civil uh, rights. Well, what kind of crimes are you talking about? War crimes? Uh, for example, uh, some of the militias went and shot some people and killed them. This is a, a criminal uh, act. Those people who have killed some people for some personal reasons or whatever reasons have been captured subdued and they are now taken to court and the court is taking its own processes through legal processes and all the people who are carrying out are with his arm. Is the court in Juba or is the court in um, Khartoum? Well, the, what happened last time was in Malakal is a provincial capital in northern Sudan whereby the, our partners, Slapis, used to have private army, tribal army fighting against the SPLA and these people According to law, should have been abolished uh, one year ago, but they have been resisting, being dissolved and integrated, and that's what happened. So now they are it is under control, they have been removed. How many people do you know or has estimated were killed? About 80 people died, okay. and which is a big number enough. 80 people, uh, military, about uh, 50 military people died, and then uh, 30 from the civilians. We were crossfire. How do you view the progress overall, though, of the North-South Peace Agreement? The North-South Agreement, uh, which is, we call it Comprehensive Peace Agreement, it is working. We have now established uh, the system we agreed, political uh, power sharing. The president of the Sudan is from the North. The first vice president of Sudan is from the South. This is called power sharing. It was not there before. Uh, again, the Northerner is the commanding chief of the Northern Army. We have got two armies. One army for the north and uh, one army for the south, and they are merged into something called Joint Integrated Army, where there are two commanding chiefs, the president of the SPLA and the president of the Islamic group. They are the ones who are chairing uh, the meetings of this army. And we have got the government of South Sudan, which is under the southern Sudanese people. We have got the police, administration, finance, banking, banking. And so that's all right. And we are well, we'll be there for six years. And then we'll vote under a referendum, supervised by international community. People from the south will decide whether they will separate to form their own independent state, or they will uh, stay in one country, but having two systems of governance under a confederal arrangement. So for us, the relationship between the north and the south are defined by the agreement and a new interim constitution. All this will determine our relationship. So up to now, it's not very smooth, it's rough, but it is going. Yeah, newbie art right here. This is Chuck D, Public Enemy Number 1. Keep it locked.
You talked about the possibility of independence after the six years. Have you looked at the example of what happened when Eritrea got independence from Ethiopia, where Eritrea's economy was going to be based on using the port of Massawa? And because all the other countries didn't use Massawa, as a country, Eritrea found itself like not economically viable in the way that it thought it would be. So that even though they have one of the best deep ports, because other people didn't use it, their whole economic model didn't work. So, I mean, has the people in South Sudan, have you thought, OK, we look viable, but if we get independence, there might be people who boycott us. The central government in Sudan, the Khartoum government, has already got all these contacts, economic, business, political contacts across the world they can subtly encourage people not to trade with South Sudan and that, you know, although you look viable, when it comes to it, you might find that the business isn't running, the economy is not running the way that it's planned to. You may be right that uh, comparing uh, Eritrea with South Sudan, there's no comparison. Eritrea is very poor. Uh, it has no proper land, system, has no proper water system. And it is even like a landlock. That's why they were fighting against Ethiopia, so they can get at least a port to be have outlet. Uh, South Sudan is one of the richest land of in the world. We have agriculture. We have 11 months rain, very green. Uh, North Sudan is desert, semi desert, no rain. They have to depend on the Nile, white Nile and blue Nile coming from South Sudan. Uh, they depend on any goods. But we have the land, we have the oil, we have the gold, we have uranium. Possibly we are going to have, oil, we are going to have uh, diamonds. Therefore, I don't think we have a problem like in Eritrea. If we, if by chance we become independent, I think North will be dependent on us because they will need food from us, they will need water from us, they will need oil from us, they will need gold from us, and so there's no real uh, big problem. What will, the problem is. The problem is manpower, but the institutions like uh, ADI and our partners in the world and the diaspora will be inviting all of you to come and develop. Bring your ideas, bring your qualifications to come and develop your country, okay? So there's no problem here. Khartoum has not had any power, will fail us if we become independent. But if we remain united also, there's no way we will accept being marginalized. We will remain with our current system, which is autonomous, confederal system. We run our own affairs, we develop. Maybe by the next two years, if you come, you will find things have changed. New roads, uh, new protection of electricity, new housing, new health facilities, new education. I mean, the protection of modern education and the education of uh, literacy. So we look forward to that. We have people who have experience. Uh, we have in almost 20, 50,000 southern Sudanese in the United States, uh, 3, 4,000 in the United Kingdom, and others. We will uh, ask Jamaicans to come in and invest. We will have Africans come in and invest. Uh, Sudan government from the north will only influence the Arabs and the Muslims. And you can see the Arab countries, they are bad with. They depend on the America in terms of development. So there's nothing they can do. And America, they are not our enemies in any way, nor the British. So we can benefit from the international community who want peace in the country. Yo, this is Tony Rothcott. I remember the board is so on radio I listen to. Wicked, your local radio station. But what's in the SPLM of South Sudanese relationship with the neighboring countries, especially the EGAD ones? Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We have a strong relationship with the Kenyans, strong relationship with the Ethiopians, Eritrea, Uganda, uh, Congo, uh, and we use South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, name it. We are all right, really. Even we have, we have good relationship with the Egyptians. Uh, Algerian, uh, even some Arab countries, Libya, even is having good issues with us. So we have no uh, SLM, no conflict uh, with anybody. We were fighting to liberate all Sudanese Arabs, Africans alike. And we wanted you to create a united country on a new basis. And, and therefore, we have no real enemies. Even in the North, there are no enemies. But the people of the South who have gone through difficulties for many years, are the ones who are complaining that they cannot trust the Arab, 
they do not trust the Muslims, they do not trust what, 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 what. And we are saying, no, we can change them. We can change them so that we can build a one United country on a new basis where everybody is equal. Africans, Arab, Muslim, Christian, what, name it, can be equal. So as well as it's okay, we are, we have good relationship with everybody. Okay, but I mean, I can understand why people are concerned about the central government in Khartoum because they seem to have a history of just going around the country fighting people, right? Whether it's the people in the south, whether it was the Nuba, they had the recent problems over in Kassala, and obviously there's like the ongoing situation in Darfur. So, I mean, you know, people are obviously saying, well, what kind of government is this? Oh, yes, now you are talking. Now we, the industrialists, we want all the Sudanese to be liberated, all the Sudanese to have equal share in social economic resource of the country. We want everybody to have right, political rights, human rights, equity in distribution of resources. Those of Darfur are fighting against the same injustice like the people in Southern Sudan, the same thing in Eastern Sudan, the same thing in Nuba Mountain, the same thing in Southern Below Nile, and the possibly the same thing in, even in Northern Sudan. It is Khartoum and other areas where the so-called central government has been located, where the operation, the exploitation, the operation of other Sudanese people have been taking place. And there are some Arab settlers, called the Arab elite, Arabized elite, who have been controlling the economic and political resources and use them against those people. Now we are telling them that we in that cell want to transform this country to be democratic, to fight against all kinds of injustice, all kinds of economic marginalization, political marginalization, crimes against humanity, like what's been committed in Darfur. As soon as we convince our fellow governors, Arabs, Muslims, that it is not good to kill your own people, then there will be peace in Darfur, like there is no peace in South Sudan, there will be peace in Eastern Sudan, there will be peace in Northern Sudan, then we will have democratic transformation in the country. We hope At one point, the SPLM were going to send, was it 10,000 soldiers to Darfur to help out and, like, calm the situation down. But it doesn't seem like the central government don't seem that interested in actually, you know, having peace in the region. You are absolutely right. We are against human rights violations in Darfur. We are against the war in Darfur. And the SPLM has asked the northern uh, partners in the government of national unity to accept the United Nations peacekeeping force. And we are now asking them again that we will support the UN to bring peacekeeping force in Darfur in order to stop the Arab militia called Janjaweed killing the Africans in Darfur. The Islam is asking the Islamists, the Arab countries, to support a comprehensive peace in Darfur whereby Arabs, Africans in Darfur, can live in peace, and Arabs and Africans in the whole Sudan can live in peace. The SPL is committed to it. SPL is insisting that we will provide, not only that 10, we will provide 20,000 for peacekeeping to disarm the fighting uh, elements in Darfur and to have a genuine comprehensive peace in Darfur, in Eastern Sudan, and we are committed to it, and we will not stop supporting the coming of UN peacekeeping force in Darfur. What are your final words? Well, first, I want to thank you for this interview, for your interest in our well-being, uh, your interest in progress in Africa, and Sudan in particular. We do our best to cooperate with our brothers in diaspora. We do our best uh, to involve you there in finding proper solution to our current uh, crisis. Uh, we will uh, we'll be searching for ways and means of having peace in this country, ways and means of implementing the CPA, ways and means in uh, convincing our Arab brothers or our Muslim brothers that we can live in peace in our country and have equal development. We will involve ADI, the media, informing those who cannot be informed because they, they are not reachable. We will uh, translate English into Arabic and African languages such like that the messages coming from you or from others uh, will be translated well uh, to our people and such like that they are also made aware that the Indian community and especially the aspirants are supporting our struggle here. Thank you.
to your Dr. Deng. All the best and we we'll speak soon. My brother, thank you very much. Bye. In the beginning, she could not get a shot. Her am sure I am can I eat one can I eat a home from we mon on. Could can go here long or then I think that then our dear no the Lord me sure the Cory. Lia on she na sure Cory na bring me a lay me sure the she can you don't get none of it. The come door in the Sudan my motherland homeland turn me jai sin your bar sin come on. Me sure the no me that sin and yen she na the we mon can you no me go long me no na our dear no ya. Manuel Jal, 
And before that, you heard myself in conversation with Dr. Dendong Grenakuanu, just talking about the situation in Sudan. Let me give you a next one from Emmanuel Zhao. This one's called The Lingua. Lengwen from the album Ceasefire, Emmanuel Jal and Abdel Gadir Salim. Okay, let me give you some more get to know men, yeah? Sticking in Sudan, sticking in Sudan. All what that interview was about, all what the lyrics are about from Emmanuel Jal, from Abdel Gadir Salim, from Rajab Sumi. You know, this is what it's all about.
track called Cultural Conflicts. Also going to give you the track called New Slavery. Coming off the album Mure Rock from Geta Nomen, one of Sudan's finest. I think he's up in Holland or he was the last time. This is New Slavery. Some of them. 